Hi everyone, I hope you're keeping well. Welcome back to the Astro Bloke channel. Today's video is a, a capture of a target I've never done before, which is the Sunflower Galaxy. And I'm also going to be demonstrating some automated sequences I have in place for my observatory and astrophotography. Um, because of my work commitments, I need to have the ability to be able to automate my uh, capture sometimes. So it's going to be some information on that and some plans I've got for the future. I wanted to um, do a little demonstration for you um, of the observatory and sometimes how I actually image. So by day, well I say by day, could be at any time. My normal uh, job is that I'm a train driver, so I work shift work. So I could be at work and um, a year ago or so, I remember I used to be driving my train uh, really late at night and I could see that the skies were clear and thinking oh, I wish I was at home, I wish I was uh, getting my astrophotography in but um, I just wasn't, you know, I was obviously busy at work and there were times where um, the nights I did have off it would be cloudy and that was becoming quite frustrating. Um, there's also the other point that if I've got to be up at five in the morning or earlier um, I can't stay up all night imaging. So I needed to automate my, my setup. That was one of the big reasons why I wanted to build a permanent setup with the pier and the observatory. And Nina's great for automation. It works brilliantly. So often what I'll do is I'll set everything up ready for whatever imaging I'm going to have. If I know it's definitely not going to rain, I'll leave the roof off of the observatory and I can actually then uh, li just remote in from my iPhone and tell it to start imaging, which is brilliant. Um, and it can work all night long and in the morning I'll come down, it'll have all turned itself off, parked the scope, warm the camera up and uh, all I've got to do is download the data. Um, even though I've got it in a fully automated state, um, often or not, I will actually stay out and do the imaging because I love sitting out underneath the stars and tweaking with settings and just generally enjoying the hobby. I don't want to become a person that just remotes in uh, collecting data and processing it. Part of the fun of the hobby is actually getting that data. Uh, but sometimes life gets in the way or it's just not possible. So it's really good to have that opportunity to be able to grab data whenever the skies are clear especially in the UK where we don't get that many opportunities. My next step is actually to automate the roof. So I've found, um, I've chosen, should I say, my method of opening the roof automatically. Um, and I'm using a sliding gate uh, motor. So all I've got to do now is work out how I'm going to fit it up there because it's quite a heavy unit um, and attach the roof to it and so it opens and closes and it will do that on a remote. The next step after that will be to get the computer to tell it to open and close. Um, that will be fantastic because if I'm away from home and I know it's going to be clear, I can open the roof and start imaging. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the observatory and I'm going to show you how I can get it all working uh, remotely. It's, uh, it's brilliant and I, I can just do it from my phone. So um, I'll uh, show you how that works. So let's get the roof open first of all. So normally the roof is locked. Um, but it's not locked now because uh, for this demonstration. The great thing about the motor is I won't need to lock the roof so much as the motor will lock the roof and will hold the roof still in place so that will be really good okay hopefully this is all going to show up so 
I'm just going to, uh, I'm using TeamViewer to, to connect to my PC. Um, I've got a code that, what I normally do is write the security code down on something so I can paste it in. Okay, so we're into the computer and there's a mirror there of the computer screen and uh, so if I go across here I can actually just unpark the scope you should see the scope slewing and we can go into Nina start the sequence that I've got and it's really great uh, it will automate everything and the only thing I haven't got automated at the moment is the roof I have to manually do that but as I say my next plan will be to actually automate the roof so if I push play if I need to I can come into it and uh, see how things are getting on um, and make any manual changes if I need to make any manual changes and um, yeah it's great and the only thing that I'm going to add in is obviously the ability to open and close the roof so um, yeah it'll be great so right let's uh, let this carry on and uh, let's see if we can get some subs of the uh, sunflower galaxy hi everyone so it's uh, I don't know what time it is it's early uh, I've got work very early today so I woke up about half four um, I've had a little look online and uh, Joe is in his observatory. I'm not sure what he's doing, but I, I intend to go in and find out, give him a little bit of a shock. Um, he's got his new Celestron Edge HD scope and uh, we are looking to actually do a collaboration together at some point because I've got my RC8, they're, they're not too badly matched. So uh, we'll see what he's uh, working on and... Uh, See if we can give him a little bit of a surprise as well. And then I'm going to have to go work, so I haven't got long. Okay, here we go. And go. So here's some of my first images that I got coming in. I've got my guiding set at uh, 0.58 total RMS, so I'm pretty happy with that so far. Nice sub, man. Whoa! Oh, Glenn, is that you? Hey! Holy crap, you scared the heck out of me, man. Not as I, much as it scared me getting up at five in the morning to come in and see you at your observatory. <laughs> I, I'm making a video, dude. I'm in the middle oh, of... I wonder what you were doing. I was going to pop in and see if I could nick that uh, new lovely scope of yours, you know? <laughs> oh, I was just checking out my star shapes. They're a little wonky on this filter, on the blue filter. But when I go to the green filter, they're perfect. So I don't That's know. Weird. I, I think it's a backspacing issue that I, I'm still getting the working the kinks out on this. Oh, you said you were going to do something to backspacing. So what are you doing now? Hang on a minute. That's the sunflower, isn't it? Yeah, that's the sunflower galaxy. You'll never guess what I've been imaging. What's that? What have you been imaging? The sunflower. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's nuts, man. Yeah, I did it the other night. I was getting some. Uh, well, I was getting the usual LRGB with some HA. Uh, About uh, well, hey, I got an idea. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we just put the two together and um, I can get about. Uh, I, I know it's going to be clear tonight, which is why I'm taking these. So I don't know how many hours you've got, how much uh, total integration you have, but I should get anywhere between 8 and 12 hours because there's another night coming up. I might be able to grab a little more. Oh, that's nice, Joe. Um, I reckon in total I'll have about 8 hours of uh, usable data, if that's Oh, if that that's sounds enough. great. Well, yeah, and I'll have 8. We'll have 16, 16 to 20 hours. That I think you need that cool. on that target. It's quite a difficult target, I think. It's, there's a lot of uh, dust around it. That uh, I've had a look at some of my subs and... They look good, and then but when I try and get the data, it, it gets quite quite messy. Looks noisy. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I so far the subs I've seen look good, but uh, I'll take that into consideration as I'm cool. processing, and we'll. Uh, awesome. So, what are you up to? Are you staying up all night, are you, Joe? <clears throat> no, no, I'm off to bed here in a minute. I just need to finish looking at the last subs that come in, and uh, then I'm off to bed. I'll let this run for the rest of the night. 
Nice. The pleasures of owning an observatory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm off to work because it's five in the morning. So um, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm just getting started. <laughs> well, all right, Joe, you take care, mate. I hope you didn't mind me popping in. No, no, you, you scared the hell out of me, but it was nice talking to you. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see you, man. We'll yeah, have a good day at care, work. Mate. I'm going to go oh. catch some Zs. Thank you. Take care, mate. All right. Bye. Good night. So the uh, image took a different turn. I was going to just do the sunflower um, image on my own, but Joe was doing it too. And it seemed like a really good opportunity for us to join our data together. It was something we had discussed that we may do sometime. So we ended up in the end with about uh, 16 hours of um, LRGB with HA. And say Joe was at 1,425 and I was at 1,624. So they were quite close anyway. And uh, we got the masters together and we blended it all, all into uh, PixInsight. We worked together on the uh, image. Um, Joe helping me with uh, masking and teaching me some bits and me showing him some, some other techniques and uh, we came up with a final image that we're both really happy with. It's uh, quite a challenging target actually to process to be honest, uh, one of the harder ones but um, I, I like a challenge so it was all good. But anyway, I really hope uh, you enjoy the image and uh, until next time, clear skies.